in this same courtroom in 2016, black man who they said we sent to kill this gentleman was acquitted by a jury. And today, Mr. Miller is sentenced to 39 years and nine months for sending black man who is acquitted to go and kill this gentleman. I didn't know them kill my friend, but everything go. They were crows. I'm a friend. The yeah, man we are teach Jamaica, government and police them say. Yesterday, that one of the country's most wanted, 25-year-old Delano Wilmot, otherwise called Preke Boy, was shot dead during an operation with members of the security forces. Wilmot, who is said to be the leader of the Retrieve gang that reigns in Cambridge, St. James, was listed as wanted following the murder of Mark Williams in June 2016. In 2013, Linton was sentenced to 15 years in prison on charges of shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm. He was, however, freed in April of this year after his conviction was quashed in the Court of Appeal. Welcome to part two of five dangerous Jamaicans gangsters in the turbulent landscape of Jamaica's criminal underworld. Several figures stand out for their notorious activities, leadership in violent gangs, and the profound impact they've had on both the society and the law enforcement efforts to curb their influence. This passage delves into the lives of five such individuals, each with a unique story that contributes to the complex tapestry of crime in Jamaica. From the economic exploitation of public spaces to brutal gangland executions, their actions have left an indelible mark on the communities they've operated within. Nevada Hodges, Christopher Dar Paul Linton, Dwayne Precapuzzi, Natty Morgan, and Tesha Miller each represent a facet of the criminal operations that have plagued Jamaica, from Spanish Town to Kingston. Their stories encompass a range of criminal endeavors, including extortion, murder, and drug trafficking highlighting the multifaceted nature of gang leadership and the challenges posed to law enforcement and community safety. I would say that it's only goodness for the future and it's only positive moves that I'll be promoting. So for the youths who are thinking positively and those who are not, we're still here to try and to guide or to point into that direction. That's the influence I want to portray now on the youth of today. Yes, that's, that's how I want to do things going into the future. Investigations into the shooting of Christopher Dog Paul Linton by gunmen Saturday night are ongoing. That's the word from head of the police's corporate communications unit, CCU, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay. As the reputed leader of the Dog Paw Gang, Christopher Dog Paul Linton, has been killed. Sources say Dog Paw was cut down by the police in Ellison Flats a short while ago. Our news team visited the community of Tavern in St. Andrew, where Christopher Linton, widely known as Dog Paw, hails from. Residents who did not wish to speak on camera expressed their sadness to the news. Relatives say they saw it coming as he was being targeted by the police since his release from prison seven months ago. Easygoing, jovial and supportive, those are just some of the words residents used to describe Linton. He's a good person. He helps people. If you don't have nowhere in your little room, he make you live. Because right now he make me live and judge can give me a spot and say, go and build up a house for you and your family then. It's been just over two months since Christopher Dog Paul Linton was shot and killed in an alleged shootout with the police. Here, on the last day of 2021, family members and close friends paid their last respects. Now, Linton was for several years regarded as one of Jamaica's most wanted men. In 2013, Linton was sentenced to 15 years in prison on charges of shooting with intent and illegal possession of firearm. He was, however, freed in April of this year after his conviction was quashed in the Court of Appeal. In June, Linton was hospitalized after being shot by gunmen in Bull Bay, St. Andrew. Linton met his demise on October 11. He says police and soldiers visit his home in Tavern, St. Andrew regularly, the latest being a little over a week ago, while a wake was in session for his brother, the late Christopher Dog Paul Linton.
before the pastor and my brother, they came here, they said they must kill my mother's two sons. You know, I'm the only one left right now. Linton says he has to take the warning seriously because three of his brothers have already been killed and he feels the police were involved in the deaths of all three of his brothers. It is not a monster to just go around and killing people as if of what them, you do what them said. You understand? You see him doing it, him doing things, right? I know him do a lot of good. I never seen the one, but I'm all, only hear about him. You have your child, and as I tell you before, them, I, them not gonna do things and let you see. You understand? Christopher Dark Paul Linton was a notable figure in Kingston's in the world, leading the Dark Paul gang and becoming infamous for his involvement in various violent crimes, including shootings and robberies. His nickname Dark Paul stemmed from his school days and became a symbol of his feared presence in the communities of Papine, Kintyre, Tavern, and August Town. The police considered him highly organized, particularly in running extortion rings. One of the most grievous accusations against him was leading an attack in Bedwood's Garden, Kingston, where 50 men allegedly sprayed a house with bullets before burning it down, resulting in the death of a family of three. Another significant charge was his involvement in the shooting of a policeman. Despite proclaiming his innocence and fearing for his life, Linton was eventually captured, tried, and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Although charges related to the family's murder were dropped due to lack of witnesses, Linton's life and death have sparked discussions about the deep-seated issues in Jamaican society, highlighting the complex interplay between crime, social status, and the justice system. His story reflects the challenges faced by those attempting to navigate and reform from within such a tumultuous environment. Despite his criminal activities, Linton's personal connections, including those with Leah Tavares Vinson, the daughter of a prominent politician and a former Miss World, illustrate the intricate relationships that exist within different social strata in Jamaica. Following his release from prison after a successful appeal, Linton's return to crime and subsequent death in a police encounter underscore the difficulties in breaking the cycle of violence and crime. Even after serving time, his death was met with mixed reactions, revealing the societal divides and the ongoing debate over the effectiveness of the justice system and rehabilitation efforts in Jamaica. Natty Morgan, known for his criminal activities from a young age, became Jamaica's most wanted fugitive due to his involvement in a multitude of violent crimes. His gang was implicated in 19 murders, 41 robberies, and other serious offenses across several parishes. Among the notable crimes attributed to Morgan were the suspected murders of a University of the West Indies lecturer and his companion, believed to have been abducted and possibly disposed of in the Riverton landfill. Morgan's criminal career was characterized by his ruthless nature and his ability to disguise himself, often wearing dresses and wigs to conceal his identity. Despite his feared reputation, some described Morgan as having a calm demeanor, which belied his capacity for violence. It was said that for Morgan, killing was as natural as breathing, an incident that might have significantly influenced Morgan's path towards criminality involved a dispute over extortion money, leading to him being shot by his brother-in-law. This event, among others, contributed to Morgan's notoriety and the escalation of his criminal activities. Morgan's life came to a violent end when he was killed in a shootout with police in Lakes Ben, S.D. Kafferin. At the time of his death, he was armed with an M16 Colt Arasaw rifle and was found with a Bible in his back pocket, a detail that highlighted the complex persona of a man who was deeply involved in criminality yet also engaged with religious texts. Most glad them. Uh, more. Man. They are sending boy a government right now. See how the government for Jamaica. 
John Watch you don't even know them kill my friend but everything go Yo crows Yeah my friend Yeah man we are teach Jamaica Government and police them say Yesterday, that one of the country's most wanted, 25-year-old Delano Wilmot, otherwise called Preke Boy, was shot dead during an operation with members of the security forces. Wilmot, who is said to be the leader of the Retrieve gang that reigns in Cambridge, St. James, was listed as wanted following the murder of Mark Williams in June 2016. The police have linked the gang to at least 12 murders and 11 shootings, which includes confrontation with police officers in St. James. The latest murder allegedly carried out by members of the gang was the killing of a man in Catadupa in the parish on July 9. The police say they carried out several operations during the state of public emergency in the parish since 2018 to apprehend Wilmot and members of the gang. However, they were unsuccessful. Me, man. Take a boy right on. They are eight years easy back here, so come back to Jamaica. A uh, normal thing. See all you government boy. You better be a soldier of security force around the yard. You hear? A big a gunshot in a ghetto. Go mush up the place. Oh. Dwayne Preki Pusey, also known as Preki, was a notorious figure in Jamaica, infamous for his involvement in several murders and other violent crimes. His activities had placed him on Jamaica's most wanted list for an extended period. Prekeboy's criminal career came to an end when he was fatally shot by the Jamaica Defence Force during an operation in Cambridge, St. James. This operation was part of a long-standing effort to apprehend him, given his significant role in criminal activities within the region. Prekeboy had previously claimed that the police could not kill him due to his strong belief in protection from Obeer, a form of Jamaican folk magic. He even boasted about this in a statement months before his death, after returning from Haiti where he was also believed to be wanted for murder. The Jamaican Defence Force wanted Preke for at least 12 murders, highlighting the extent of his criminal involvement. His death was seen by many, including residents and family members, as a relief due to the nuisance and threat he posed to the community. A raging gunfight between criminals and police in Rivoli, Spanish Town, St. Catherine, left students at St. Jago High unable to leave the compound for several hours today. The principal said reports of a hostage situation and students being trapped were untrue. Nadine McLeod went to the scene today. It's a bit peaceful here now at St. Jago High School. It's now shortly after 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But it wasn't quite like that a few hours ago. For almost two hours, students were trapped in the classroom as a live operation continues around them. We got to Spanish Town shortly after 3 to find a gun battle on the way. Helicopters hovering above and police and soldiers entering river. Nevada Hodges also known by the name Novado Hodges or DJ, was a significant figure within the Klansman gang, a group known for its involvement in various criminal activities, including extortion rackets, particularly in the Spanish town bus park. His role within the gang highlighted their economic strategies, leveraging control over public spaces to fund their operations. Hodges' activities extended beyond typical violent crime, showcasing the gang's economic control and exploitation as key components of their operations. Tragically, Hodge's life came to a violent end, which was a result of internal gang conflict and possibly as a retaliation for his alleged involvement in the murder of a gang member's sister. His head and body were found in separate locations in Spanish town, indicating a brutal execution style that is often associated with gangland violence. This incident was linked to the broader context of gang power struggles and the impact of crime on Jamaican society, particularly in areas like Spanish Town where gangs like the Klansmen have a strong presence. The police had recognized Hodges as a significant threat due to his involvement in multiple homicides and had offered a substantial reward for information leading to his capture one despite their efforts. Hodges managed to elude capture until his untimely death 
which highlighted the challenges law enforcement faced in dealing with highly organized and dangerous individuals within these criminal networks. The alleged leader of the Klansman gang, Tesha Miller, has been charged with murder and accessory to murder. A parish judge had given the police until 9.30 tomorrow morning to charge or release Mr. Miller. Welcome back. Continuing the news. The alleged leader of the Klansman gang, Tesha Miller, will remain in lockup for Christmas as he was denied bail Monday afternoon. Miller is facing charges in relation to the murder of Douglas Chambers at the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, 10 years ago. On Monday, prosecutors reported that they have two witnesses who will testify that Miller gave the order for Mr. Chambers to be killed. The prosecutors say Miller gave the order after Mr. Chambers refused to pay extortion money to the Klansman gang. They say the JUTC chairman was accused of disrespecting the gang by paying money to another Spanish town-based gang. The prosecutors told the court that the order was given to Andre Blackman Bryan to carry out the killing. Bryan was subsequently tried for the murder but was acquitted by a jury. Eight years and nine months in prison for accessory before and after the fact of murder is said to be the man who ordered the killing of then JUTC chairman Douglas Chambers. In this same courtroom, in 2016, black man, who they said we sent to kill this gentleman, was acquitted by a jury. And today, Mr. Miller is sentenced to 39 years and nine months for sending black man who is acquitted to go and kill this gentleman. Friends of Tesha Miller upset with what they call injustice. Family friends say he has always been a kind-hearted Christian. Me as a elder, me know the man in the place where my youth. Me not really know him as when hear people are saying, you know. Driving truck, very clean man, very kind and gently. Yes, love little children and all those things. My Sunday school teacher from school, church. He said me got he finish high school. I met me finish high school. Fee money make me finish high school. You get me? So. Things when me hear them say about him, a giant to them talk about him for bit, me not see that person. They argue Miller has been a welder almost all his life and his conviction highlights the inequality in the Jamaican justice system. The court this morning began hearing the appeal of convicted leader of the Klansman gang, Tesha Miller. Tesha Miller was, sent was in 2020 sentenced to 38 years and nine months in prison for plotting the 2008 murder of former chairman of the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, Douglas Chambers. He was convicted on December 2 on one count of accessory before the fact of murder and one count of accessory after the fact of murder. Tesha Miller, also known as Rat, is a prominent figure within Jamaica's criminal underworld. He has been identified as the leader of the Klansman gang a powerful and violent criminal organization based in Spanish town, S.D. Catherine. The gang is notorious for its involvement in a wide range of illicit activities, including murder, extortion, drug trafficking, and gang warfare. Miller has faced numerous legal troubles over the years, including multiple arrests and charges related to his criminal activities. In December, he was arrested in connection with a stolen motor vehicle, leading to a demonstration by residents who claimed unfair targeting by the police. He has also been detained and interrogated by law enforcement officials for crimes committed in Spanish town. Despite facing serious legal challenges, Miller has managed to evade conviction on several occasions. He was acquitted of murder charges in the past due to insufficient evidence and has faced deportation from the United States for re-entering the country illegally. Miller's influence within the Klansman gang is significant, and his leadership has been associated with bloody infighting and power struggles within the organization. Witnesses have described him as a ruthless leader who wields control over the gang's operations and orders violent acts against rivals and perceived enemies. The ongoing murder trial of Tesha Miller, particularly in connection with the killing of former Jamaica Urban Transit Company, Judge Boss Douglas Chambers, has garnered significant attention. Key witnesses have testified against him, shedding light on his role as the head of the Klansman gang and providing crucial insights into the gang's criminal activities. Tesha Miller was found guilty on charges of robbery with aggravation and illegal possession of firearms. In conclusion, the narratives of these five individuals underscore the ongoing struggle against organized crime in Jamaica 
and the resilience of communities affected by their actions. The law enforcement's efforts to dismantle these criminal networks continue, but the legacy of these gangsters serves as a reminder of the deep-rooted issues that fuel the cycle of violence and crime. As Jamaica moves forward, the stories of Hodges, Linton, Pusey, Morgan, and Miller stand as cautionary tales of the paths that lead to destruction and the societal costs of allowing such figures to rise to power.